All right, 12.5 deals with angle relationships in circles. So our first theorem states, if a tangent and a secant or chord intersects on a circle at the point of tangency, then the measure of the angle formed is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So we've done it before, but with inscribed angles, but here we have a tangent and either a chord or a secant. So we see that BC is tangent and AB is secant to the circle. So this arc BC is twice the measure of this angle here. So if our arc AB is let's say it's 60 degrees then this angle would be 30 degrees so the angle is just half the measure of the arc so these have the same relationship as the last section we did with inscribed angles. All right, so let's look at our first example. We need to find the measure of angle EFH. So we're looking for angle EFH, this angle here. We see that our arc is 130 degrees, so our angle is going to be half the arc. So we take 130, divide it by 2, so our angle is going to be 65 degrees. So the measure of angle EFH is 65 degrees. Alright, our next example we need to find the measure of the arc GF. So we're looking for this arc GF. We know that this arc is going to be half the measure of this angle here. So we need to figure out what the measure of this angle is. So we see that this is a straight line and it tells us that this angle here is 120, 122. So to find what the other part of the line is, we're going to do 180 minus 122. So this angle here is 58 degrees. everyone sees how since this is a straight line these two angles add up to 180 so we're still looking for this arc so what we do now is multiply the angle by 2 because the arc is twice the length of the angle so we take 58 and multiply it times 2 So our measure of the arc is going to be 116 degrees. All right, example three, we need to find the measure of angle STU. So we're going to go from S to T to U. So we're looking for the measure of this angle. And we're going from the arc to the angle. We divide by 2. So we're going to take 166 and divide it by 2. So our measure of the angle is 83 degrees.
Okay, our next theorem states that if two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is half the sum of the measures of its intercepted arcs. So, looking at this example, we have two chords that are that intersect in the middle of this circle. So to find what the measure of angle one is, we're going to add this arc plus this arc and divide by two. So we add the arcs together and divide by two or multiply by one half. And that'll give us the angle inside. So let's look at our example. So we need to find the measure of angle AEB. So we're looking for this angle here, AEB. So what we do is we add the two arcs together, the two intercepted arcs, and we divide by two. So we have 139 plus 113, and we're going to multiply this times one half. So 139 plus 113 is 256, so 252. So we have 252 times one half, which gives us 126. So this angle here is 126 degrees. What would angle DEC be? This angle here. Wouldn't it be the same because they're vertical angles? Perfect. It's the same because they're vertical angles. Awesome. So the measure of angle AEB is 126. All right, again, we need to find the measure of angle ABD. So we have angle ABD. So we're going to add the two intercepted arcs together and divide by 2. So we have 65 plus 37. We're going to divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. It's the same thing. So 65 plus 37 is 102. So 102 times 1 half is 51 degrees. So the measure of angle ABD is 51 degrees. Okay, example six, we need to find the measure of angle RNM. So now we're looking for this little angle in here. So we don't have the measure of the intercepted arcs for this angle, but what we can do is find what this angle is and subtract that from 180 since we have a straight line here. So we're going to add 91 plus 225 and multiply times 1 half. So we have 316 times 1 half, which is 158. So this angle is 158. So to find what this piece is, we're going to do 180 minus 158. So that little angle is going to be 22 degrees. Okay. 
Okay, our next theorem says if a tangent and a secant, two tangents or two secants, intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is half the difference of the measure of its intercepted arcs. So before we are dealing with angles that, with lines that intersect and made angles inside the circle, but now our angles are outside the circle. Remember, exterior is outside. So what we do is we take our arcs that it intercepts. So we have arc AD and BD, and we subtract them. So we have arc AD minus arc BD. We multiply it by 1 half, and it gives us this angle here. We do the same thing if we have two tangents and the same thing if we have two secants. So you would just take this angle, this arc minus this arc, and it'll give us this angle. The arcs times one half. Don't forget the multiply by one half. All right, let's look at our last two examples we have here. So we're gonna take our intercepted arcs and subtract them. So we have this arc and this arc. So 87 minus 7 and then we need to multiply it times 1 half so 87 minus 7 is 80 80 times 1 half is 40. so our measure of this angle here x is 40 degrees In our last example, we're going to do the same thing. Here we have a tangent and a secant line. We're going to subtract the two intercepted arcs. So we have 200 minus 74 times 1 half. Two hundred minus seventy four is one twenty six. So one twenty six times one half is sixty three. So x is equal to sixty three degrees. All right, and the last page, the last slide is just like an overview of all the things that we did today. So here, this is when we have an inscribed angle, when we have a tangent and a secant that make an angle on the circle. We have when two secants intersect inside the circle and then when they intercept outside the circle. And we have the formulas for all of those here. So this is just like a review of everything we did today. And this one, inscribe the circle, is 12.4, just this one. Any questions about 12.5?